the indices in the array as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now notice that the parent of the fourth item in the array is the second item. The parent of the second item is the first item. The parent of the sixth item is the third item. And the parent of the third item is the first item. The parent of the fifth item is the second item. So in general, can you, uh, based on this, what is the parent of the ith item? So if I look at the ith item, say i is equal to 4 or 5, whatever. Instead of maintaining pointers from nodes to children, you can actually, uh, and from children back to their parents, if you represent a heap in an array like this, then given a node in the array, you can immediately figure out the index of its parent because the index of the parent is just going to be the index of that node divided by 2 and the floor of that. I hope you know what the floor operator is. It's basically an integer division. I mean, if you know Java, uh, if you do 5 divided by 2 integer division in Java, you're going to get 2. You're not going to get 2.5. So the floor operation is basically the integer division operation and it's going to round down uh, the value of the quotient to the nearest integer. So the parent of the fourth item is going to be the second item. The parent of the fifth item is going to be the second item. The parent of the third item is going to be the first item because 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 and the floor of that is 1. Is this clear? What about the children of a node whose index is i? Do you see a simple formula for that? The left child is going to be 2i. Okay, if you take this node, the index is 1. The left child is at index 2. The, the right child is at index 3. So the children of i are going to be at index 2i and 2i plus 1 respectively. This is going to be the left child and this is going to be the right child. So the the children of 2, for example, are 4 and 5. The children of 3 are, it's just 6 actually. So how do you know how many children a particular node has? Well, if you, you calculate what 2i and 2i plus 1 are, but both those values need to be less than the number of elements in the heap. Once you cross this boundary, then you are into this empty zone. So in this case, we have 6 elements. The left child of 3 is going to be 6, which is within that range. So we know that it's a valid child. But if we calculate the right child, the index for the right child is 3 times 2 plus 1, which is 7. So, but there is no 7th element because 6 is the size of the heap. So we are assuming here that we are going to maintain a value called the size of the heap, which will tell us how many elements in this array actually belong to the heap. So a simple way to figure out whether or not a node is a leaf is to calculate these two values and if they end up crossing this boundary then that means these, th this node doesn't have any child. So five, the, the, the children of 5 should have been at 10 and 11 but 10 and 11 fall into this empty zone. So we know that the node with index 5 is a leaf node. Any questions? Uh, sorry, I think there's some uh, disturbance in the uh, audio. Yeah, yeah, now we can hear. Yeah, actually, we don't want to do that because simply for the reason that we want to keep this formula simple. So we could start from zero here, but for the purpose of 
simplicity we're going to assume that this zero i mean if you're going to implement this in some programming language where array indices start with a zero just assume that you're going to ignore zero because th that's going to keep our formulas very simple okay now how do you let's let's now try to implement these two operations on this heap inserting a new item so let me draw that once more two six actually let me take a different example here um, let me take a slightly larger example just so that we can Oops, this is a min heap. So let me go with the same example. So we're going to look at the insert operation now. Uh, Suppose I want to insert a new item into this heap. Um, and let's say the value of that new item is 2. Now the way the insert, uh, uh, the, this we're going to implement, the way thing, the insert operation is going to work in this heap is we will add the newly inserted element Eight, six, four, five, and three. We're going to add the new element in the first empty slot. So we're going to put two here, and this is equivalent to adding two as the right child of this node four. Now, when we add a new element here, it may or may not satisfy the heap property. Note that it's going to satisfy the shape property because now you see why the shape property is important. I mean, one reason is it enables these formulas to be very simple. Okay, that's that's one of the reasons why the shape property is useful. We can easily go from parents to uh, children and from children to parents without following pointer links. And note that, you know, uh, if you actually implement this via pointers, you're not going to be able to make much use of caching because when you allocate an array array in memory, all these locations are contiguous in memory. So when you retrieve a particular section of the array into the cache, the region around that particular item is also going to be brought to the cache. Right? So you can use advantage of that. So even though theoretically, in terms of the asymptotic complexity, it won't make any difference whether you implement this as an array or directly as a tree with pointers and all. But in, in, in practice, that constant factor is going to be better for an array implementation of uh, this heap. So one of the reasons, as I said, for having the shape property is to enable us to directly figure out what the parents and children are. By the way, you don't actually need to do a physical multiplication or an integer division here, because since you're dividing by two, all you need to do if you have an efficient if you want to if you want to do this efficiently you can just remove how do you do a division by two an integer division by two you take the binary representation of that number i and you shift it right by two that is going to remove the rightmost bit and that's going to be that's going to give you the value of this straight away so you can see that um, Implementing it this way can enable us to perform this operation operation super fast. Likewise, if you want to calculate the children of i, all you need to do is you need to shift left this i by one bit and let that last bit be either 0 or 1 to get the left child or the right child. So you can implement this multiplication and division purely by shift operations in, in their binary representation. You don't need to actually uh, do that multiplication.
So that's one advantage of the shape property. It enables us to have these simple formulas which can be executed pretty fast. The other reason for having the shape property is that when we insert an element, we know that the element will need to go. We know exactly where we want to insert that element because we know the first empty slot that's available. Because we know all of these slots are, have been filled. So there's no way to insert it in between. So we insert it here. And by doing that, we know that the shape property is maintained. But what if the heap property is not maintained? In this case, it is maintained because two ends up being less than four. So the 